Before we get started, I just want to do a gentle reminder. Um, we each have a certain allotted amount of time. Amount of time. And we beautiful women have traveled so far, and we just want to be considerate of all of our sisters here today. So I'm going to do my part, and I'm going to stick within my time frame. And I just need you to do the same thing. Deal? Yeah. All right, let's get going. We're going to go through really briefly, because of the time, we're going to go through four principles that will help you to be that catalyst for change. And they are eliminating your limiting beliefs, Yes. Boundaries, self-love, and of course, leadership. Woo. Yes. All right, ladies. Eliminating those self-imposed limiting beliefs is going to be paramount, and I'm going to tell you why. Because how many of you talk to yourself at night, throughout the day, right? We all do, right? That are those limiting beliefs are those thoughts. But when those thoughts become negative or Debbie Downer, as we like to call them, right? Those start to kind of reshape our mental constitution. Then we start operating under the construct and the misconception that our gender has some sort of identity involved in that. And we know that to not be true. Why? Because we are women. There is no reason why our gender should control and shape who we are, why we do it, and define what our vision is and our role and our purpose in life. It is just not true. We, as women, we have to embrace who we are. We cannot sit back and allow ourselves to feel sorry for ourselves. We can't allow ourselves to continue on in this vicious cycle of leader, of wanting to be a leader, but not taking that step to do it. Right? Yeah. Right? Yes. We're all leaders. You start off as you are born. Thank you, a leader. Absolutely. Let me tell you a story really quick. And the sister, um, the speaker right before the other one, I, I, can't, I don't want to mispronounce her name, but I'm going to go ahead and channel, and I want to thank her for this. I'm going to go ahead and channel my grand, great grandmother. Lily May Welch. And let me tell you why. When my mother, a 20-year-old, excuse me, 19-year-old woman, found out she was pregnant with me. And on that very same day that she wanted to tell her mother that she was pregnant with her first child, her mother lost her mother that very same day. So when I say I'm going to channel Lily, you know why? Because un unbeknownst to me, I was going to have to fight my entire life. But I was going to always have that woman, her spirit, inside of me, around me, and guiding me. And that is why I channeled her today. Thank you for that. Embracing the change in your life today is... It's the very reason, how it's how you're going to grow. It's how you're going to transform yourself into the leader that you are destined to be. Some of us wake up and we're leaders. Some of us are taught. Regardless, you are a leader. What happens to the old eldest sibling in the home? They almost become the parent, right? How many of us are the oldest <coughs> I am the oldest sibling at home, and oftentimes, being that eldest child, you don't get an opportunity to really be a kid, right? Because once that child behind you comes, there is no more time. You now have to teach. You now have to lead. You now have to show wisdom, discernment, and also courage. Let's get into some boundaries. Y'all ready? Yeah. As you know, sometimes we don't like boundaries because we like to people please sometimes, right? We're going to eliminate that. First, we started with eliminating our limiting beliefs, right? And once you step into your leadership role, it's going to be it's superior. It is the number one thing to do is to set boundaries. That is with your family. That is with your children. That is with your parents, 
and it is with anyone who is going to come between your inner peace. Why? Because you cannot lead in chaos, right? You cannot lead someone out of chaos. You cannot lead them into success. And you will not be successful yourself if you decide to keep people pleasing. It gets you nowhere, and it costs you what? Everything. everything. Thank you. And time is everything. Because once it's gone, you cannot get it back. That's right. Setting boundaries, what does that look like? I don't take any phone calls after 8.30. I don't take any calls. There's only about five or six people who can get through to me after 8.30. I don't counsel anyone, I don't coach anyone on Saturdays and Sundays, yeah. Yeah. right? Yes. That's time for me and my children and my, my wife. She's as supportive as she could possibly be. But hey, listen, you have to recharge. Mm -hmm. You cannot continuously go and go. There is an old saying, some of y'all may know this and some of you may not, you don't learn it today. You have to teach people how to treat you. Yes. Yes. Come on now. I know yes. your grandma told yes. you that one. Yes. You have to teach people how to treat you. Yeah. If you don't respect yourself, they will never respect you. They'll continue to walk all over you. Setting boundaries keeps you balanced. How many of you believe that? Right? Yeah. Look at the legal scales. Okay? The legal scales... They start off level, correct? They start off pretty even keel, right? But what happens on that left-hand side of that scale when you add your children, picking up the dog, the vet, uh, caring for your sick mother, your spouse, going to work, working your business on the side, being there for your friends, right? And then on the right side of that scale, what do you have? I may occasionally go to the movies. I may go on a spa day once a year with the girls. I may just decide to take a drive on the coast by myself. But what's happening is you're out of balance because you're consistently working hard and doing everything for everyone else, but you're not doing anything for yourself, right? So without those boundaries, you cannot stay balanced. It is impossible. And what happens when we're out of whack and we're out of tune? Mm. Depression sits in. Mm. Anxiety comes, right? right? Overwhelmed. And you e eventually, you break. Yeah. I've seen it happen. I know what it is. I have been there myself. <sighs> Self-love. Right? Look at all these gorgeous women in this room. Look at that. Turn around. Look at everybody. <laughs> when you see yourself in the mirror, you should be in awe. Come on. You should say, Oh, you sexy mother. Come on now. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> You should be in awe. You have to look at yourself and say, oh, girl, you look good today. I'm good today, right? So what? Uh, what are you going to incorporate, ladies, into your disciplined lifestyle to show yourself the self-love? Because we're very structured, right? Because we have children, and they need what? Structure. It's a given, right? So we're always these, nur we're these nurturing beings. We are leaders by right. But what happens when that leadership is questioned? What happens when that leadership isn't coddled, isn't hugged, isn't held, isn't encouraged, motivated, and allowed to shut off, right? What happens to your plants if you don't water them? They simply won't grow, right? right? And what happens to a weed? Does it need water? Absolutely not. Does a weed need permission to grow from under the concrete? No. 
Absolutely not. A weed needs no nurturing. Why? Because it's a complete thorn. Yeah. It is unwanted, right? You don't want it and you certainly don't need it. Those are those negative thoughts in our head. Those, those eliminating, eliminating those limited beliefs, right? Give yourself permission to check out every day. It is difficult to do. Come on, it's hard now. I'm not going to tell you something is easy, and I know it's not, because I've been there myself. But I know that when you set your intentions yes. on loving yourself, yes. That's right. when you set a goal and you say, I am going to the movies every Sunday, rain, sleep, or snow, and ain't nobody coming with me. Mm. Right? <laughs> That's what self-love looks like. And y'all keep me on time. I forgot to start my timer. <laughs> I'm trying to be conscious of the time. Women. How many of us have been told women are strong? Right? We're strong. You got to be a strong black woman. That's what they tell me. You got to be a strong woman in this world. I'm here to tell you, you need to scratch that off your list today. Why I gotta be strong? Why? I don't have to be strong every single day of my life. I'm not a man. I'm not a brick. This is blood in my veins. And sometimes I feel like crying. Sometimes I feel like screaming for joy because I'm so excited. Yes. And other times I'm a, I want to be alone. Mm -hmm. I want to sit in the bed in my pajamas all day and read books mm -hmm. and chill and Netflix and chill. <laughs> right? She's shaking her head because I know you're you going to do that when you get home. <laughs> <laughs> Women, sisters, I want you to create a list of people you can be vulnerable with. And let me caution you, this ain't no long list now. Let me caution you. <laughs> two. You took the words out of my mouth, sister. It is two people. That's it, right? Because what happens when you evolve into the leadership role? You can't take everybody with you. Did you want to just okay? <laughs> you can't take everybody with you. And when you're leading, although we lead by example, those people don't know your inner thoughts. They just know what? Your vision. Right? That's what they're following, your vision. Let's delve right on into leadership because we, we started, we've eliminated our limiting beliefs. We've already set boundaries, intentions, goals, We've learned how to love on self, fall in love with self. But now that you are evolving into this catalyst for change, now that you want to evoke change, you have to define what it means to be a leader to you. Right? You have to define that. How many of you have heard that leaderships have a certain style? Right? Yeah. I'm looking around the room, and I'm not going to lie to you ladies. Everybody has such impeccable taste today. Your style is fitting. It's you. Right? But what happens as a leader, you have to cultivate your own style. Some people are stern. They call them an iron fist. Me, I'm stern but I can get down and dirty and I pull up my sleeves and I work hard with you. But that's me. If that's not you, find out what style you like. Don't be passive aggressive, but definitely if you're more of a softer tone, go with it. Because remember, you are defining who you are as a leader. Nobody's doing that for you, right? You are tacking inward and asking yourself, Lord, guide me on how you want to use me to reach other women, right? Because people are watching you whether you know it or not. 
Young girls are dying, crying for mentors. They're looking and searching for women to look up to. And if you don't step outside of your comfort zone and lead these young women to change and lead them to success and educate them, well, my God, you're missing out on your entire purpose of life. Your style embodies you. But what happens is you have to embrace that style. You have to be comfortable knowing who you are when you walk into the room. That's right. How many of you seen women walk into the room and head down? Hi, how you doing? Oh, hi, hi, how you doing? How you doing? Oh, hi, 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 how you doing? Why are you doing that? Why are you didn't walk into the room with your shoulders back? How y'all doing? I've, I've arrived. This, this is the party started yet. How y'all doing? Yes. That's right. She was here. I'm in the building. Right? That's what you, that's the attitude you have to have. It's not about arrogance. Stop that. Stop pigeonholing other sisters. It's not about being arrogant. Who she thinks she is coming up here with that Gucci shoes? <laughs> Come on, y'all do it. I ain't gonna lose you today. I got to lose you today. But you have to find that voice, right? That inner voice. Women, what are we born with? That inner voice is called intuition. Does nobody have that? We are the only species that has that, right? And you go with that and you lead with it. Take charge with your intuition. You have it for a reason. That is the inner voice. And when you think of something, you go with it. How many of you have late night thoughts? Sometimes you, your mind is racing. I want you to start getting up and open your notes, because I'm on Apple. I'm on iPhone. I don't know what y'all use for joy. But open your notes and just speak what's on your mind. Ladies, you will have written a book. You don't know what your path looks like. Let me tell you, I was living check to check about 15 years ago. Oh, I was dirt poor. I, I could barely finance a piece of bubble gum for five cents. That's how I, I was really down. And I kept saying, why is this happening to me? Well, that's life, right? Life is going to knock you down some. But how you evolve as a leader, you step into that leadership role, is you start to think about the journey. There's a song, um, there's a young girl, Started out in Disney. I, I can't remember her name right now. But she, her song was about, uh, it was called, It's the Glide. Right? It's not the traumatic experience that shaped you. That's not what shaped me. Living in a one-bedroom apartment, below market rate, because I couldn't even afford Market rate rent. I couldn't. I barely had furniture, but I sat at home. It was a Friday night, and I'll never forget. Some friends said, "Oh, let's go out to the bar. Let's go have some fun." You, you, I know you've been having a hard time. I said, "No, I'm gonna stay home." I stayed home, and I started a business with twenty dollars in my checking account. Right? I had a recipe for pecan pie. I had never tasted it before in my entire life. I never even knew what pecan pie tasted like. And I kept working on this recipe because people said, oh my God, it's delicious. So I said, well, hmm, these are just pies by Tara. I woke up Monday morning. My checking account was negative $14 and some change. 
And that was the most exhilarating and powerful feeling I had ever felt in my entire life. Why? Because I stepped out on faith and I did something that I was, I knew I, I had it in my mind to do it, but I would never follow my intu intuition, my inner spirit. Because why? You don't have a degree. You don't. You didn't graduate with an MBA. You ain't got no money. Your credit is shot. Look at you. You can't afford to start no business. You don't even know what it means to start a business. Well, guess what? I graduated from Google University. <laughs> All right? Because the tongue, there is life and death is in the tongue. Right? And if you keep speaking it into existence and have that growth mindset, well, yeah, of course you can start a business. I can absolutely own a restaurant and be the first lesbian to do so in my town. Run for public office as the first black lesbian in that entire city and the second black woman in 160 years. Wow. Yes. yes. That is what determination looks like and growth mindset. Yes. If you would if you would riddle me just a little bit, I want you to take this quiz to figure out where you are on your path to leadership. And it's, it's quick, about 10, 15 quick questions, right? And you ask yourself tonight when you go home, do I have a fixed mindset or do I have a growth mindset, right? I want you to ask yourself, Ladies, I have enjoyed my time here with you today. I honestly have. And I want to stay in contact with you. I want to tap in with you. Scan that QR code because on the 21st, I'm going to have a free workshop. And we're going to eliminate those barriers that restrict us. We're going to tap into our leadership ability. We're going to create healthy, affirming boundaries. And of course, you already know what is in the practice. Self-love. Ladies and gentlemen, I couldn't sleep last night and I wrote a poem just for you. This is the truth. It's called I Am Me. I am victorious. I am courageous. From the bottom of from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. There is something wonderful about me. I am a woman, I am free. I am a woman, I love me. I am bold, I am courageous. I am fearless and I am confident. I am free because there is something wonderful about being me. Thank you.